I'd like to introduce to you officially this idea of slope. Slope is basically asking what's the rate of change of something? What's the steepness of a plane? What's the steepness of a line? Uh, does it rise slowly or does it rise quickly? And then sometimes it's, does the slope change over the course of a particular graph or function? So to get an idea where slope comes from and to kind of help lay out uh, for you a tool that we can use is based on this idea that imagine I have a straight line and I want to find out what's the steepness between any two points on that line. And how we identify that is we look at how quickly it rises from one point to the next point versus how far it runs from that point to the next point. So we're looking at its change in y, its change in its height divided by its change in its length. Um, so change in y, we designate it as y2 minus y1 because we're trying to find the highest point subtracting it from the lowest or subtracting the high point to the low point. I also noticed, I also wrote that y2, we also been looking at function notation. And so sometimes f of x will be used as y. Uh, f of x will be used again when we know for sure it's a function. Y's will be used in a generic graphical situation. So we have my change in my height over my change in my run. My rise over my run, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's use that to kind of help get an understanding of what we're doing. So imagine that I have two points. I have one point, negative three, and negative one. And I have another point of negative two and four. So between those two points, can we determine what its slope is or the slope of the line that contains those two points? Look at our model here. I have two coordinate points. I'm going to designate the first ones as x1, y1, and the second ones as x2, y2. Now those ones and twos, those are, those are just subscripts. They're there to help me keep in mind that I have one set of coordinate points, I have a second set of coordinate points. I could have called either one first and the second. That's just how they lined up on my paper. So based on these subscripts, I want to take one value of y, subtract it from the other coordinates y, divide it by x2, which is a negative 2 in this case, minus, uh, minus a negative 3. Reduce that down, 1 minus a 1, or a 4 minus a 1 is a 5. Negative 2 minus a negative 3 is a 1. So the slope between those two points is 5. Now, what if I did describe it in a different way? What if I did use negative 2 and 4 as my first set and negative 3 and negative 1 as my second set? So this becomes my x1, y1s. In this particular case, y2 minus y1, negative 1 minus a 4, all over negative 3 minus a minus 2. Negative 1 minus a 4 gives me a negative 5. Negative 3 minus a negative 2 gives me a negative 1. Wait a minute, I should have got the same answer. Oh, well, yeah, I did. This reduces down to 5. So you can see, regardless which of the coordinate points I labeled as my first or second, I both got to, they both represent the same slope. In fact, what it kind of represents is 5 represents the slope coming up, looking upwards. The negative 5 one I got was looking at the slope looking backwards. But it's the same slope. It's the same designation of the line. Let's look at one more negative 3 and 4, and 2 and negative 2. Which ones do you want to designate as your first and second coordinate points? Well, all right. I heard you. Look at our model of slope. Slope, again, was my rise over my run, my change in my height over my change in my run, or my distance, uh, horizontal distance. So this becomes negative 2 minus 4 all over 2 minus a negative 3. 
that becomes negative six all over, was that two? I lost my, two minus a negative, two minus a minus three gives me five. That's correct. So I have a slope of negative six fifths. Now we're gonna use a, a variable to describe slope. So you're gonna see often that slope is gonna be written in shorthand as M. M represents our slope. So in this particular case, our slope was negative six fifths. Over here, our slope was five. 